Hey, my name's Brent. Welcome to 49cc Scoot. Today I'm going to be trying out a race timer app and testing acceleration. I was living in the dark ages for a very long time using an old flip phone. It wasn't until late last year that I finally picked up a smartphone and as soon as I got that, one of the things that I wanted to check out were the timing apps on them. So I looked around and it seemed like a popular app was the GPS race timer app. It's free, so it's hard to argue with that. And I've seen a few people on the forum use it and it allows you to select from two different timing modes for each run. So it can time to a certain speed like zero to 60 miles per hour, or it can time to a set distance like 60 foot or a quarter mile. It would be nice if it could do more parameters in each run, so you could stack up 60 feet, eighth mile, quarter mile, zero to 30, whatever you wanted to do. But it's free and it's easy to use, so I'm not really gonna complain about it. For my first attempts, I tried putting the phone under the seat of the scooter, and that didn't work out so well. Sometimes it would start timing before I ever took off, and other times it would never start timing. Occasionally it worked right, but overall it wasn't a good option. I would prefer to mount the phone to the handlebars of the scooter, but I had read that especially iPhones had issues with vibration and it could damage the camera, so I really didn't want to go that route. The best solution for me was just to put the phone on the inside pocket of my jacket and that seemed to work fine. I started off with five test runs focusing on 0 to 30 mile per hour acceleration because I wanted to compare the app results with my own timing and I've done a whole lot of 0 to 30 tests. The app was also set for 8th mile times, but I really wasn't concerned with those and a lot of times I was slowing down before the 8th mile. Three of the five runs were within two tenths of a second or less of each other, but two were significantly quicker with one being half of my usual times. I then used my usual timing method on the same runs, which is to start a timestamp in a video editor just as I open the throttle, and then watch it frame by frame to see when I reach a certain mile per hour, and then note that elapsed time. Most of the time I'm not lucky enough that the gauge reads exactly the mile per hour that I'm looking for. For an easy example, I may see that it reads 29 miles per hour at 3.0 seconds, and 31 miles per hour at 3.5 seconds. So I can assume that it reached 30 miles per hour at 3.25 seconds, which I'd round off to 3.3. There's no way to be totally accurate with a half second update time on the gauge and these methods, but I do take great care in my timing efforts and results have been very reliable and consistent for me for a long time. My numbers were almost all slower than the app's times. I would assume that should be the case because my timing starts with throttle opening and the app is gonna require movement to trigger it. One thing that I've always felt was a positive for my method with tuning is that I think it would be more likely to show the state of tune at launch. So if there's a lag for any reason, like a bogging carburetor for example, then I should see it in my numbers. It should show up with a GPS timing as well, but I'm not sure that it would be quite as pronounced. Based solely on the test so far, I like the results of my timing better because there are no anomalies. I also wanted to try 8th mile and quarter mile passes solely for my own curiosity. So I did 13 runs on my two-stroke. I wanted to do a bunch of times so that way I could see how much they varied and also I figured I could average those out and more times may increase the accuracy. My best eighth mile elapsed time was 9.3 seconds, and my worst was 11.4, and my highest mile per hour was 59, and the slowest was 52. Two seconds and seven miles per hour are pretty substantial differences for eighth mile runs. I do expect to see variations because it's a scooter and doesn't make tons of power, so it's going to be more susceptible to even small differences in conditions, especially as speed increases. But according to local weather stations, winds were calm to two miles per hour that day, 
and I tried to make sure that I was on flat surfaces and all runs were done in a narrow time frame. The quarter mile run results were fairly similar in elapsed time variance, again being about two seconds different from best to worst. Mile per hour was even further off with a 17 mile per hour difference, but that's at least partially my fault. I believe I let off too early on the slowest 47 mile per hour run, which threw off both mile per hour and ET. And then there's another run that's only 51 miles per hour, but that has one of the quickest times. I think that one's an error on the app's part. If you remove some outliers, the data seems to show that I could expect to do the eighth mile in the mid 10 second range at around 55 miles per hour, and the quarter mile in the mid 17 second range at just over 60 miles per hour. Averaging all results tells a pretty similar story with the eighth mile being 10.5 at 56 and 17.7 at 60 for the quarter. I've never done any officially timed runs with this scooter, but the numbers are roughly what I'd expect. I know that I'll have people telling me that these numbers are way too slow, I pretty much always do, but you've got to remember that I'm 300 pounds, so that's about double the average rider, and you don't see many scooter races that are my size because weight makes such a big difference in acceleration. I'm also not gaining much speed beyond the 8th mile mark. I can get to around 60 in the 8th, but it doesn't do much more for the rest of the run. Now, I did the math and it takes about 7.5 seconds to travel an 8th mile at 60 miles per hour and my quarter mile times are mostly seven to eight seconds more than my eighth mile time, so that pretty much works out. I had an old drive belt with a bit of wear on the scooter for those runs, and that tends to increase RPM and usually lowers my speed. So I swapped out the belt for a new belt and I wanted to give it another try. Unfortunately, there was a long period of time where it was windy every day, and the results of my eighth and quarter mile tests varied way too much to learn anything. Even trying to keep the wind at my side, my experience with small scooters has been that side winds can affect timing if they're strong enough. I was also very curious to find out what kind of 60 foot times I could do, so I set the app for 60 feet and 0 to 30 and did 15 runs. It was still windy, but I'd expect the wind to have much less effect at low speed. <laughs> The results were all over the place according to the app. It said that my quickest 60 foot time was one second. To put that into perspective, a fat guy on a scooter would be able to hang with the likes of pro stock cars and top fuel Harleys off the line if those were accurate. On the other end, my slowest time was 3.5 seconds and that's really slow. The group averages out to 2.3 seconds, which sounds reasonable to me based on seeing other people's time slips and I'm not saying it's accurate, but likely to be close enough for my curiosity. Zero to 30 times displayed by the app showed the same widespread, with an average time quicker than I'd expect. I timed those myself as well, and my results were again consistent within a narrow range. The results with a small scoot made it pretty clear that I should stick to my traditional timing methods since my primary goal is to accurately track changes. But I still wanted to try my T-Max as well to see if it had the same issues, and to see how slow it is. I did 14 runs on the T-Max with a GPS race timer app recording eighth and quarter mile times. I think the results here are even more confusing than they were for the small scooter. The quarter mile times varied by over five seconds and many of them were much quicker than I think it is. Once averaged out, I think the eighth mile time should be close, but I doubt that I'm doing 15.5 in the quarter. I've seen some results online between 16 to 17 seconds for a stock T-Max with lighter riders and I do have lighter slider weights and mild porting, but I'm also heavier. I even tried a few test runs in a car and a truck to see if maybe being on two wheels was in some way responsible for some of the strange results that I'd seen, but I had the same experience. Let's check out a few examples. The app says that the F-150 took four seconds to go 60 feet, and it was at 34 miles per hour at 60 feet. On the same run, it took 3.6 seconds to reach 30 miles per hour, but it didn't reach 30 miles per hour until 79 feet. 
So it was going 34 miles per hour within 60 feet, but it never reached 30 miles per hour until 19 feet later at 79 feet. In this pass, the Nissan did 0 to 60 in 9.2 seconds and it took 669 feet. Meanwhile, it took 10.1 seconds to go an eighth mile, which is only 660 feet. When all is said and done, I think the GPS Race Timer app can be fun and it can possibly provide a ballpark performance figure, but I absolutely would not suggest going out and doing one or even two runs and taking the results too seriously. It looks like my old timing method should work just fine for me, but if you're interested in some more accurate options and other options that are out there, there are plenty of them. Number one would be just take it to the track. They will very accurately tell you things like 60 foot, eighth mile, quarter mile, and trap speeds. The only downside there is if you really want to find out zero to 60, they're not going to do that, or at least to my knowledge, most tracks do not. Another option is to buy a performance meter like a V-Box or a Draggy. The Draggy is very popular right now, and at the time of this video, it's a little over $150, so it's pretty well within reach if you want to do something like that. They will provide accurate results that have been tested by people against track times. I can't say that they're always going to be accurate. The track is probably always going to be the most accurate, but they do a really good job. And the way they do it is their GPS box updates with a much higher frequency than what your phone is going to. So they can actually pinpoint times and do multiple tasks at the same time where the phone has a lot of limitations there. If this is something that you're interested in, remember that the most important thing is to be safe with whatever you do. Go to the track, use a closed course, obey the law, you know the deal. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up. If you've enjoyed watching it, please give the video a like, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more. Also, if you've got some time slips or some times you want to share, go ahead and post those in the comments. Thanks for watching.